Good afternoon, Monarchs. On today's video, I want to show you a couple ways that we can put up trim in our houses. Now, I got a couple scraps left over some, from some jobs around the house that I'm going to cut for you today. This is a piece of casing. This usually goes around windows and doors. Um, and this particular trim is something that we call quarter round. It's a quarter round. And what this is used for, a lot of us like to put new flooring in our houses. A lot of your newer floors like your laminates and your vinyl floors and even hardwood floors, when we put them in, you actually, the trim is usually, the baseboard is usually existing. So we have to hide that edge where we cut the floor. And that's what this quarter round is used for, to hide that edge. And this is a very easy trim to put up that you can most definitely do yourself. Now, before we get into how to make these cuts, let's talk a little bit about the tools that we can use to make these cuts. Now, this is a compound miter saw. This is an electric saw that can cut trim on angles. Um, it is, you can buy these saws pretty inexpensively and you can spend a little bit of money on them, but for you as a homeowner, you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive one. So what's nice about these is they can be moved on a variety of angles. It'll do just about anything you need to do as far as putting down baseboard, trim around doors, windows, cord around them, I'm going to show you, or even crown molding. Now, one of the cuts that we use the most when we're putting up trim work is a 45 degree angle. A 45 degree angle is half of 90 degrees. So when we put trim up in the corners of our windows and doors, that is the cut that we want to make. Now to do this on this saw, I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to shift it over till I see the number 45. I'm going to lock it down on 45. Now most saws will have what's called a positive stop to where once you get to that, you'll feel that saw kind of lock down and you click it in. Now when I'm cutting any type of trim on a 45 degree angle, the blade is toward, turned a lot closer towards where I'm cutting, so I want to make sure that my hands are out of the way. And you always want to make sure that you have your safety glasses on. So to start this off, I'm going to move my body over here, and I'm going to cut this on a 45 degree angle. I'm making sure my hands are out of the way. So I'm going to squeeze down. Make that cut and I'm going to keep that saw down until that blade completely stops. Then I'm going to raise it back up, making it safe, and I always get my scrap out of the way. Now, I'm going to take this other piece of casing scrap that I have and I'm going to turn the saw the other way on a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to lock it down. And the same thing goes. I want to make sure that my hands are out of the way. So I'm going to get my hand out of the way. I'm going to keep my body over here. And I have that. This is a sliding compound. Meter. I have it locked down right now so it can't move back and forth. And I keep that saw buried down until it completely stops. And when I get done, these are my two. 45 degree angles. Two 45s make a 90. Now, that's pretty basic, okay? Any type of basic miters like that are pretty cut and dry. But what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about making a cut with the coping saw. Now, I'm right handed. One of the easiest things for me to do is I always like to work from the right to the left. So I'll start over here and I'll work my way right to left around the room. So to make a cope, one of the first things I want to do is I'm going to turn that saw to the left. I'm going to lock it in on 45 degrees. Now this works with crown molding, this works with baseboard, and this works awesome with quarter round. This is one of the easiest cuts you can make with quarter round and have the best results. Now a lot of times when I'm cutting cord around and stuff like that, the smaller pieces tend to get thrown out of the saw. And that's why it's really important that we have safety glasses on. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've had a piece come up and hit me in the face. So I want to make sure that my hand's out of the way and I'm going to make my cut. Now, 
This is how we do a cope saw with a miter with the cope saw. Now, this is our place right here where the wood and the white meet is where we want to make our cut right here. And to do that, I'm going to use what's called a coping saw. I'm going to take this coping saw and I'm going to follow where the wood and the white meet right here. Now, what you want to make sure of when you're doing this is that you take your hand and you dip it down a little bit as you're going. You want to make sure you're removing the back side of this material because if you don't remove enough material, they're not going to fit together good. So let me go ahead and show you how you do this. I'm going to slide this salt up. And make my cut. That's Taya Allender. Daddy, Hold on, Taya. Taya Allen, I'm pulling my video. And this is the cut that I want to make right here. As you can see, I took and I made that cut and I remove the back of this material out. If I don't remove enough material out of the back side of this, it's not gonna fit together good. And here's the beauty of this cut. When I make it, those two pieces, they fit together perfectly just like that in a corner. And that is the beauty of a cope cut. It's a cut that where, you, you know, as opposed to making two miters, you can make that cope cut, and that's a superior cut because it's gonna get you a tighter fit and it's going to just look better. If you get a little bit of a gap, one of the best things you can do is take some of that caulking and put a small bead on there and it'll look great for you. So let me do this one more time just to recap how I did this. I turned my saw on 45 degrees to the left. <laughs> and the line that I make, this is it right here. This is the line that I want to cut out. I take my coping saw and I'm going to follow that line around. And with a little bit of practice, Monarchs, you too can master this joint. Really easy to do. If you have to, buy an extra piece of trim just to practice a little bit. And once again, Taya Allender made a cameo appearance on our learning videos. Hope you had a good day, and, and please stay at home, Monarchs.